Thank you very much for staying with us. Um, we are going straight into the newspapers. Uh, clearly, there have been developments around the country from yesterday's district level elections. We'll be uh, finding out from uh, our guests what they make of it, really, what the party's position has been, and uh, whether or not uh, their observations tie in with what the Electoral Commission um, projected. We'll be looking at that and then some other major headlines. So the Daily Graphic front page uh, says, New Supreme Court justices take office. Also, low turnout marks district elections, apathy, boycott, rare heads. And then also independent broadcasters welcome revised digital TV standards and graphic review newspaper price marginally. All right, and uh, we go to the back page. It says, Vice President cuts sword for watermelon processing factory and Ghana loses 19 million Ghana CDs to fire outbreaks. Um, if we go to the Daily Guide, similar story having to do with the judges being sworn in, but the headline says, don't be corrupt, Nana Kufuado cautions judges, and then low turnout at local elections. You have Mahama Girl insults journalists. Also, um, when you go to the back page, why Komi lost his title, uh, Antelotti wants Everton assurance, and then all set for M uh, MFM evangelism football. Okay, and then maybe we'll look at uh, two more papers. The Ghanaian Times has a picture of the president and his wife, says president and the VIP vote in district assembly elections. Also, Giba Lord's new standard for free-to-air television broadcasters. And the banner headline for the Ghanaian Times is, don't give judgment without reason, president advises judges. Um, uh, there is a, a one here that says district assembly elections end and then record low turnout. Back page, Ghanaian Times, approve national labor migration policy. Um, and then also, NCSALW urges public to help clamp down on gun violence. All right, so I think we can, uh, clearly we have uh, an idea of what the major headlines uh, or the front pages of the papers are. Let me introduce my guests and we can delve into it directly. George AC, my immediate left, he is a member of the NPP's communication team. And then also we have Fred Agbanyo, who is a member of the NDC's communication team. Thank you, gentlemen, and good morning to you. Yeah, good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Uh, let me start with uh, you, Fred. Uh, clearly, the NDC has had issues with um, some of the issues the Electoral Commission has raised regarding, for instance, putting together a new voters register. Uh, that was even going ahead of yesterday's major national exercise. But from the preliminary information you've gathered and reports you've picked from the ground, what, has, what would your assessment be from yesterday's exercise? Well, thank you very much. Let me say good morning to our church viewers. I think that uh, so far I've not heard anything about any violence in any part of the country as far as the elections is concerned. And for me, that is the most important thing, that people were able to go about their uh, activities without anybody hindering them or preventing them from you know, exercising their legitimate franchise. Uh, secondly, we are told that the turnout you know, almost all the polling stations uh, were not that very encouraging. And I think the trend has been the case over the years. Anybody who has followed very closely these assembly elections, it appears uh, majority of the citizens have not shown much interest uh, in that particular elections. And I think that we need to do a comprehensive assessment as to why people are not particularly interested in, in, in taking part in that election. Did, did, you, did you vote? Unfortunately, I couldn't vote myself. Uh, my vote is far away back in my, my, my village, and I live in Accra. Mm. Uh, I travel, go back uh, in the night. I couldn't travel again to the place. It becomes a bit difficult. And if you look at what happened yesterday, what has been happening on national election days, where almost all political parties get involved to facilitate the movement of people, especially from the cities to their village, to go and vote. And because it's assembly elections, it's what it is, mm. you know, parties don't get, get so much involved. Nobody facilitates that movement. And so people are not able to travel to mm. their, their villages, you know, to go and exercise uh, these elections. Their campaigns, too, are not that much vigorous. But when it comes to the unit committee members, so for instance, you meet people who say that we went to vote, we don't even know who their people are. Exactly. You know, they didn't come to campaign to us. We've mm. never met them. We don't know what they're capable of doing. And yet, we've gone to vote for some people to represent us. I, I think and I insist that we need to do serious research. We need to find out why is that people are not very interested in these particular mm. elections. Mm. 
you know, we should not just conclude that because it is not partisan. There may be other factors why people are not showing interest. And how can we also attract the very best caliber of people from communities, you know, putting themselves forward to, to contest for these elections? Yeah. That also we need to look at. Because since this is started, I think, in the 1988, you know, they are not paid. You know, persons who go to represent the assemblies are not paid. Mm -hmm. We are told they are giving some small allowances here and there. Uh, two, three, the last two times we are told we are giving some bicycles and motorbikes mm -hmm. to facilitate that movement. Is that enough? You know, if you look at the responsibility that is on them, you go back to our communities, anytime there's a problem, it's not anybody is sick, they don't have money, even for school fees and the rest, the first point of call is that the assemblyman. Yeah. And so if it's no resource, you know, how does he encourage others to want to move in? If, for example, I live in Accra and I want to represent my people at the assembly level and I have to be traveling down every now and then the for a meeting, who is going to take off my TNT and all that? So we need to have, you know, you have to need to look at it completely and see what we can do. How do we attract people? If you say people? we need to, uh, and that will, I'll bring that question to you. If you say we need to, mm. um, you know, assess and then investigate mm. why there seem to be a consistent... Uh, decline, probably even a decline, or there's a general low turnout mm. for district level elections. Who is whose responsibility is it to do that? Some are saying we should blame the NCC. While you you think up an answer, let me uh, get um, uh, Mr. EC to tell sure. us what his preliminary comments will be following yesterday's exercise. Yeah, thank you, uh, Martins. Uh, good morning uh, to you, my colleague Fred, and then good morning to our viewers. Uh, let me say good morning to the. Uh, elephant family and remind all of us of uh, Sunday's uh, national conference and a rally uh, in the forecourt of the Trade Fair Center. So all patriots, all MPP family members are entreated to come there. Uh, we are closing the year with a massive rally. Uh, let's all be there to give support to our government and our party. Yeah, yesterday's uh, district assembly uh, elections, uh, you know, following through from the morning's reports, uh, some places doesn't start on time. Uh, it's one thing I want the Electoral Commission to uh, address their minds to. Um, and then when it started to, uh, the turnout was so very low. The initial, this thing wasn't too encouraging. Mm. Uh, but as time goes on and reporters were bringing uh, the feed, you know, you get to know uh, it's picking up, but not picking up as would have been, uh, you know, in any general election. So one of the reasons, my brother Fred, is, uh, I'd use a lot of reasons for that. But one of the reasons, again, is the campaign level of the candidates. Okay, how involved were can the candidates? How vigorous was the campaign? If a candidate is able to mount a very vigorous campaign, house to house, alerting the people, and then on the day of voting, his team are able to move and then rally people to the voting center. It's important, mm. okay? Uh, the parties do that, as I said. Yeah. But the individual candidate, the serious ones who are determined to win, you must go from house to house to get people there. But, but the other but, but, challenge... But is that right? yes. <laughs> oh, no, no, yeah, it's right. You're going to remind them that today is the day. You get it. Let's move there to vote. It's not about... You know, incentivizing them. No, it's, it's reminding them and telling them some people who are old, they need to be conveyed to the place. Right. You get it. And so, if they see that commitment from your part to get them involved, they are happy. You get it. Mm. And they'll go there and vote for you and come back. You get it. So, it's the involvement of the individual candidates in this exciting the whole thing is very important. And, and as Fred says, some will say, I don't even know the candidates. You get it. But the truth is, when, when I was going through some of the uh, places, I, I saw somebody with an Anfield, a master's for unit committee. I said, wow. Mm. You see, it, it's, it's, good. It's, it's good. It's good for unit committee. So uh, these are the ways we need to begin to um, uh, ginger the spirit of the people there. But going forward, as, as I said, generally, I stand to be corrected, but we've not gone past 40 or 45 percent now mm. for the assembly. We are elections. yet to get the certified yes. figures from yes, the election. Yes, yes, we are yet but, to get uh, it. But at the least general, the, the, the observers like uh, Kodeo, yeah, for Kodeo. instance, said as of midday, the numbers yeah. were not well, well, you know, when you look at some reports, uh, about 520 now on the register, and as of midday, 25, 27 yeah, had voted. 20. You get it. So uh, it's not too encouraging. So it's about, I agree with uh, uh, Fred, that is about time we take 
take a second look at that. And we've gotten there. Mm. His Excellency the President is, uh, put something, a motion on the table. Which motion is for us to make it partisan? Okay. Good news is that uh, His Excellency at the uh, meet the press, uh, you know, said the NDC, he's been told the NDC is written to the uh, government and the MPP for engagement. That's very good. In fact, I've read a such letter from the NDC. Uh, they are ready to sit down to talk. There are two possibilities. Either we all go to generally agree on making it partisan, or the NDC has got more reasoning to still maintain how, it how, this way. How, you get it. It's is at the table that you put your issues there, that. and then is it uh, we make progress. That if we, what is the belief, and how are you sure? There seems to be a surety from all the political parties that if we allow partisanship to go to the grass, the very grassroots of our, yeah. our, our democracy, it is going to whip up public interest yes. in it. How do you guarantee? No, no, because the parties have structures from the basic. The NDC called VS branches. We call ours polling stations, okay, executives, okay, the branch executives and the polling. And they start from the local level. I was a polling station chairman for eight years, right, at the local level in Cape Coast, uh, North A4. You get it. And so you then begin to engage the people. You do that, there's that general excitement at the base. And when you're working, you're able to attract the big guys within the community to yes. support the cause, right? Okay. And so the party will ship up the excitement and sentiments among people uh, there. Again, too, what it is on a partisan platform, the, the, the Fred says something, or I think in the reading, uh, that the people, the assemblyman doesn't impact them very much. You get it. Mm. And so somebody said in, in the graphic that what what do I get by going out there to vote? To what vote. will the assemblyman do for me? You get it. And so when we begin to have the partisan representation, then the party is taxed with the responsibility of helping develop that community. Okay. And so if you win and now you are not doing it, you they are not going to hold that individual Fred Agbenyo as the assemblyman, but they are going to hold the NDC. Or they are going, not going to hold George. They will hold the MPP that, look, you came, we voted promised, for you. Yes, you promised that. to do A, B, C, D, and you didn't do it. Mm. You get it. So then we get that responsibility from the lower level all the way to the top. To the top. You get it. That is very important. And the last one, uh, it helped to build uh, uh, the political individuals from the grassroots to okay. build up to the top. By the time you get to the top as an MP or any other candidate, you've mastered the rudiments the of political representation yes. and representation of the people and then what, how to engage the people constructively to get development to the area. And, and Fred, you were saying that we, sh we and you use the yeah. word, we need yeah. to investigate or get to the bottom of this. Who are the we you're referring <laughs> to? I think that all of us are stakeholders yes. in this whole you know, exercise. Uh, from the electoral commission, you know, from uh, the local government uh, uh, itself, you know, as a ministry, political parties should be interested. You should be able to find out what is happening, what is it that is creating the apathy, people right. not showing much interest in, in the issue. Uh, I was not expecting us to be going back to the debate as to why, whether we should make local elections partisan or non-partisan, because all the reasons that were given uh, prior to uh, the termination of that particular exercise are so clear that where we are now as a country, introducing, introducing partisanship at that level will not be near to our general benefit. Right. I, I don't want to believe that because we want to encourage people to move in there, the only way to go about it is to make it partisanship. I am saying that that era where people do this job as a voluntary job must end. Mm. It must become a full-time job. Then so we can attract... The people that's need right. to be paid. That's yeah. right. They need to be paid. Yeah then they can attract the right caliber of persons to move in there. He was talking about the candidates taking the bull by the horn, moving in there, campaigning to the people, pulling people to the police station. If there are no resource, yeah. if I'm going to take up a job that nobody is going to pay me, why, for instance, will I go and take a loan or go and borrow money to go and campaign? Mm. How am I going to pay their money back? And so even though the desire may be there for them to move out there and go and bring people from their various homes and their farms to come and participate in the exercise, the question then arises, if I spend money to do that, because I'm not going to do that freely. Right. You know, and if you follow the elections very closely, in the past, these assembly elections, people don't really spend money. We are told the electoral commission yeah. is supposed to create a, uh, yeah. create a platform for them, print posters for them, and what have you. Mm. The scenario has changed. Now they are spending cash, they are spending money. 
You go to community, they ask you, what have you done in the past? Mm. For which you must vote for you to go and represent as an assembly person. Does and so, not, does that not raise the concern about monetizing almost every aspect of our, our electioneering process, our democracy? Everything you need to do has to come with money. It's that, unfortunate, that, but that again, a, a bit of concern, doesn't it, it? It's a conversation we must have, but from where I sit, I don't know how we are going to curtail it. Mm. It is becoming, it's becoming more entrenched. It's as if, if you don't have money now, regardless of your ideas so and our, your vision our and your positions, commitment... Electoral positions are for the highest bidder. It looks yeah. That is what it is becoming. And it's a very unfortunate, but that's what we are getting to. You know, yeah, if yeah. you have really gotten involved and you follow elections and you follow politics, if you don't have the money, get down there to go and campaign. And the people ask in the face, Master, after for the sweet talk, we've had too much of this. What can we gain? Mm. Maybe those of us who are in the political space, we have to do some rethinking. What do we do? Is it a case that people have lost confidence in us? That when they give us a mandate and we get into the office, we don't think our back to them, we don't get back to them, we don't come and say whatever what do you goodies think? we get. Is that, not, is I that think the case? It's a point. If the people know that you are going to represent us, whatever you get from uh, the, the top there, you bring it down to them. They will aid you to go. But where the impression is, once you get there, I've forgotten about them, you go there and say, okay, let me get whatever I need to get from you before, before I send you. Because once you get there, you're also going to take of yourself and your family. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we are going to change that narrative. How we are going to encourage the people that, listen, I am going there to represent you. If I go and I get one CD, I'm bringing it down for all of us to share equally. Up, once that thing enters into people's mind, mm -hmm. I don't think the kind of demands they make these days. You go to campaign, people are not asking you necessarily, come and face the community mm. challenges. They're asking about their individual issues. They don't come and pay fees, come and pay medical bills, yeah. come and rent for me, come and do stuff like that for me. It's not really about the community welfare. And so we need to have a complete, again, conversation around this subject. How do we go about it? Can we get to a point where all candidates who are contest for an election can agree that, you know what, we are not going to pay. Okay. Can all of us be that disciplined? And say we are going is it, to is campaign. It George, yes, it's possible. <laughs> I don't know if it's that's possible, the, but the concern of uh, <laughs> the monocracy that has found its way yeah. into our, our democracy yeah. generally seem to be seeping to the grassroots. That's what some people feared when this issue of referendum to allow parties to the grassroots. That was a concern that some of the ills at the at the, at the broader national level national. is trickling to the lower level. How do we deal with this? Uh, uh, Fred has said something uh, uh, interesting, that we make the people begin to appreciate that we are there to represent them and we'll bring whatever... And not to enrich and ourselves. And not to enrich ourselves. But we need to practicalize that. That's right. And so those who are there, what are they doing to make sure the people are getting the deal of the national cake? You get it. Mm -hmm. Especially at the assembly level. There are certain developments that are coming. Uh, we have about 148 communities in the <laughs> district. You get it. And so the assembly, 15 electoral areas there, uh, about five, six, seven of them are getting monumental development going on, mm -hmm. right? Because their representatives are able to make a case for their area. And the others see. And as it goes on, they see that, no, the kind of people we are electing are able to make an impact at the assembly. You know, mm. there are committees mm. in the assemblies mm. and co. Yeah. And so their impact is being felt there, and that is attracting development to our communities. Then people will begin to say, okay, the caliber of people we need to elect to go there uh, will also be re-looked at, and it's key because they will be able to make a case and then bring development to our communities. Mm. When that is beginning to happen, then uh, we'll be making progress. But as for the finances, whether partisan or non-partisan, if I'm well-resourced and I identify some, you know, assembly members inf who have their influential people in the communities, yeah. and I know election is going to come next year, Okay, so I would need some influential guys to be able to push my agenda. Position, then so. I can sponsor those assembly people who are influential. And when it comes to the po political issue, then, you know, you I'm a step ahead. Yeah. You get so the monetary issues uh, is serious, but we need to be doing uh, education. I remember when I was contesting for the uh, central regional secretary position, uh, I got to a place, a guy looked at me and said, look, I, I believe you can do the job. But George, <laughs> <Your pocket is empty. laughs> George, anybody can do the job once he's resource. So resource me before we go. <laughs> So that, that's, that's quite a, a challenge, isn't it? Yes, it's, 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 it's a challenge. And I agree again with, with Fred that it's about time we take a look at it. 
Okay. So we, can we give them a salary or a good allowance okay. or something that will make them function properly and commit to the local government mm. uh, uh, system? Okay. And then last one, the NCC's education, you know, collaboration with Electoral Commission to carry out education amongst people uh, on the need for assembly representation. How right? much of the blame, and that's the final bit on, on this topic, yeah. how much of the blame should be laid at the doorstep of the NCC in terms of public education because that's their sole mandate yeah. educating the public and getting them to know you know what is happening unfortunately as of the time the referendum was being uh, pulled out most people didn't know that three different activities were going to happen when you go to the polls they only thought that it is a referendum we're going to vote for either a yes or a no they didn't know it was district level and then uh, unit, you know unit election. committee election people didn't know that and so it affected yeah. it definitely would play a role in the, the, yeah. the turnout yeah. what should they what kind of blame should be laid at the doorstep of the ncc maybe uh, george will start with that and then we'll okay. look at uh, blaming ncc i don't think will be the best for all of us uh, we we all know ncc uh, now government is up to their uh, budgets yeah, but still, uh, it's not the best. You get there to be able to roll out their uh, education campaign th around the clock, right? You know, in every community. So, uh, NCC, I wouldn't blame them, but I will say we need to resource them more to be able to live up to their expectation. Mm. And they must work in tandem with information services department. Well, when we're growing up, ISD, you know, will come around with the advance yeah. and co, and you know, films and all. But now we can say because of uh, uh, almost every home having a television set, uh, that can be done through that. that. Is that yes, but once upon a time it was. The homes didn't have that much. And so community mobilization mm -hmm. through the uh, vans and co. But the van can still do the campaigns. The fortunate one, Martin, is that now we have community uh, broadcast systems yeah. in almost every community right. across the country. Mm -hmm. And so the NCC can partner the local opinion leaders to be able to do those kind of uh, sensitization and education. So okay. people begin to... The last one, uh, I, I, somebody somewhere said that uh, he believes the withdrawal of the bills, 553 and then 243, uh, affected uh, this turnout. The turnout? <laughs> I don't know, but until I see the percentage, the final collation and the percentage, uh, I don't know, because the excitement was gingered, and then when it was withdrawn, the excitement It's, it's even likely yes. some may have yes. thought that uh, the cancellation of the referendum yes. means the cancellation of... Uh, yes, possibly. Possibly. It's possibly. possible. Yes, possibly. Um, um, Fred? Well, I think that I share in almost the orders that you raised about the NCCA. It is not enough for us to come and see and start blaming them yeah. for whatever they have not been able to do. The question is, to what extent have we resourced them yeah. to be able to discharge on their mandate? Mm. Reality is that we are not resourcing them enough. Everybody knows this. Yeah. You know, so they may have the will, they may have the desire to do their work, but if they don't have the means, it becomes very difficult for, for them to do what they're supposed to do. So what we should be encouraging governments to do is to resource them. They are very key. In, uh, in our governance architecture, they yeah. are supposed to pass the information on to the people mm -hmm. so that people know what they're supposed to do. And so the vehicles that they, they, they need, we need to be able to provide, we need to be able to recruit more personnel, have offices in the districts, in the regions, all over the place. That is the only way we can get them performing efficiently. Maybe what they should be doing now, beyond waiting for resources coming from the state to them to work, they should find a way of partnering, you know, media houses as part of your corporate social responsibility you know, you can do some voluntary yeah. adverts for them here and there. Almost every community now, every locality, we have one radio station or the other. We have this community broadcast system, yeah. like you mentioned. We have television stations all over the place. So you may not have the means, but can we engage the owners of these stations and say, you know what, this is a state issue. Can yeah. you assist us? Can yeah. you give us five minutes of your time every day just to broadcast the issue? Yeah. Because as you say, even the referendum, you know, almost everybody was misled into thinking that the referendum <laughs> was meant for the election mm -hmm. of D.C., which was not the case. Yeah. And I believe it was deliberately done. Uh, thank God, eventually, uh, you know, it came out that it was not the case. But talking about referendum, we are told the NDC now wants to meet uh, and talk. Is that the position? Have you written officially to either the 
MPP or to the government that... I would have to cross-check that information. I don't know about that. But the point is, if we say we have to sit down and talk, it doesn't mean we are necessarily yeah, going yeah. to amend our that. position. Yeah. Maybe we want to win MPP yeah, over to reason possibly. along our lines because we think that the position we have put forward so far uh, is the best position for this country. And the good news is that it's not even NDC alone that is talking. Mm -hmm. You know, we have heard from the Bishop, uh, Catholic Bishop Conference. We have heard from Nananum for the first time in our country. National House of Chief was virtually divided yeah, over divided, a subject yes. like this. Mm -hmm. You know, it tells you how critical it is. We have heard from, you know, civil society organizations and well-meaning Ghanaians who seriously came out to speak against this particular, and some you know, intervention. <laughs> and so, we should not limit it to an NDC MPP issue. There are others who are not. It, it, but it's broader that than the, that. Yeah, it's broader than that. Okay. If some of you, the people in the media, you openly came out and even started a campaign against the referendum. Mm. And the issues we put forward, up until you can give us, you know, solid facts to contradict the position we are holding, I don't see how we can amend our position as of now. Okay. We've let's, practiced uh, the non-partisan for 31 years, right? So and, there should and, be a reconsideration yeah. of Yes, we need All to right, take The other second, story though. on the front page of the Daily Graphic uh, has to do with three um, Supreme Court um, justices sworn in uh, yesterday by the president. I'll just read a bit of it, then maybe we'll find out um, from my guests what they make of, of, of this. I so think we're going to talk about letter commission and this is a proposal to compile a new yeah. voter register. Yeah. Oh, so you want us to deal, we, deal with that? I think it's very important. Once yeah. we are discussing yeah. with them, yeah. before we can Because die. it concerns yeah. elections. Yeah, yeah. elections. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. clearly the, that's going into 2020. The concern has been especially uh, raised by the Chamber of Local Government saying that why is there the need to compile a totally new register considering the fact that we have one that we are using for the district level elections. Why can't we just update it and then go into the new elections, uh, the 2020 elections with it? Uh, George, the NPP holds a strong position that they believe what the Electoral Commission is saying has been well thought through and so must go ahead with compiling a new register. The NDC and some other parties hold a contrary position. Why is there the need from the NPP's position that we need a totally new register and not an update of what we used for yesterday's national exercise. Thank you, Martins. Uh, as the MPP, our case was stated when we were in a position. You, you remember, let my vote count. Okay, and then you remember my boss, uh, Abu Ramadan, uh, to go into Supreme Court. There's right. a, a ruling in his name, right? Uh, to that effect. And the need, the fact that a lot of people who have registered and are on this current register use the National Health Insurance card, you know, as their source document to register. We made an attempt to expunge those names from the, the state. We, you know, we said we we're told about 55,000 or so were taken out and other, but how sure are we? You get it. Again, you remember the famous press conference uh, by His Excellency, the current Vice President, uh, Dr. Baumia, uh, at the Lisa Hotel, uh, that, you know, we have foreigners in our register. Their names are on our register. And as of the time he did the press conference, he had examined about 10% of that, and that 10% examination pushed out over 70,000 foreigners uh, on Where the register. Those not Speculative no. propaganda figures, the vice, no. the then vice no. presidential no. candidate. No, no, he didn't out. examination. There was a register. You know, mm -hmm. what he did was a he used the purposive sampling approach. What it meant is that we know uh, people, the Ghana Togo, Togo border area. We, we have that belief that a lot of them cross over to vote in Ghana. And so he started from that area. It's purposive sampling. Once you do that, then you will get high numbers from that place. He thoroughly uh, examined the register, okay, and came out with those figures. And then people were making the argument that why he said 10% of that brought over 70,000. Then what it meant is that the remaining 90%, you know, where they is going to bring maybe nine times that. No, mathematically that is inappropriate. What it means is that once you know the high density area will be this border area, once you do that, it could be that the remaining 90%, you may not even have anybody there. You get it all. You may have lower numbers from that place because those areas, people do not cross to come and then register and those things. You get it. And so the president said that now vice president was right in that examination. And so we made cases about that. And, and the argument again is that why are we still not using the 1992 register and just updating them? No, because we had technology is advanced. 
technology is advanced, you know, from 12, 2012 was the last time, right? And then, you know, now, about eight years next year, don't you think it's about time we revise the, the biometric devices that we are using? Because we have challenges. You so, know, so, sometimes so I was the there. It is, it is that revision that the likes of, not just even the NDC, but then some other stakeholders are saying that, why don't you just do no, what a do, what, review what and an lose? update? Why what do you lose? No, you that, that, totally that new no yes, and, and, and a, a totally new biometric device. Okay, because we, I was there in, in Cape Coast, Montessori, in one of the elections. A, a lecturer I know, okay, who's there, and then he was to put, he put his hand on the biometric device, God knows how many times. His name, everything, were in the register. We know him but as somebody there. To... You get it. And it happens a lot yeah. across. So we want, as of now, there would have been a new biometric device that has been developed which can, you know, with new technological devices and advancement, that will make it possible to get off some of these things. What do you lose by getting a completely new register? I'm up for a completely... And what in do the you part of the you just do an update and a no, we, the No, the one that is existing. Uh -huh. We've had cause to go to the Supreme Court to challenge certain things. And I don't have the ruling, but in the Supreme Court rulings by Justice uh, Georgina Wood, something. It said there are some problems with that. And you see, you must take a look at that. You get it. And so it is time, I think... It doesn't matter what we say. That's why we go for IPAC. You get it. So EC calls all of us, engages us, and the NDC decides to walk out. It's not right. I think they should sit down, listen to the EC, uh, because well, they, they themselves they, they, they have made the argument. No, they've made the argument that we cannot control the EC, right? That's what the law says. But they, they, okay? they, they, they hold the, the position, they hold the position that <laughs> the Electoral Commission yeah. consistently has disagreed with them. And, well, Fred himself is here. Fred, what... Is it that, what is the problem that the NDC and some of the other smaller political parties have with going for a totally new register and a biometric system? I am surprised that uh, my good friend, IEC, decides to go back to some of the things that Dr. Baumia did prior to the 2016 elections. I thought that you'd have shared those things for now, that at least we no, don't to remember. To we don't remember case. those those propaganda, Whoa. meaningless propaganda that you're engaging at the time. But unfortunately, I've decided to bring it back to this place. It's relevant. It is good for Ghanaians who live in America, who lives in anywhere in Europe, to travel down to Ghana to come and vote, come and register and vote. But when a Ghanaian lives in Togo or Benin or Nigeria and he crosses the border to Ghana to come and register, he is seen as a foreigner, and so he must not be permitted to be on the register. Dr. Baumia wow. stood at Alisa and made those pronouncements. They had done an assessment of a register 10%, and you got about 700,000 people who are, 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 are foreigners. foreigners. And he couldn't substantiate, 70, he couldn't substantiate that with any comparative analysis. Did you bring the Togo register? You remember yes. at the time, hold it, hold it. They brought a register he claimed was the Togolese register. Mm -hmm. The electoral commission had a cause to write to say that their register is not a public document. And so what Dr. Baumia was parading around here is not coming from them. You remember that particular issue? Yes. <laughs> and so what it did, everybody knew that it was just, you know, a propaganda piece at the time to muddy the water just so they can achieve whatever they want mm. to achieve. Are you, by this admission, saying that the register that we use in electing Anado and the MPP and who are in Parliament was an illegal document and so no. they are in office illegally? No. Is that what you are suggesting? <laughs> no, that, I think the no. concern is that now, that document is it's old good. and no. need uh, to be reviewed because there, was, there were the anomalies practice. raised. And the, the, machines. the practice has always been that we do that after 10 years. Every decade we try to change the register and come out with a new register, check the history. Okay. We have not gotten there yet. Technologies are advancing every day. Are you saying that if we wake up tomorrow to a new technology, we have to throw the register that we have today away and go and print a new one? We just used this same register yesterday to elect assembly members yeah. and a unit committee members. Right. We didn't have any problem with the register. So far, this is concern that you raised, that some persons went there, they have to uh, put their fingers on the machine for a number of time before it could recognize them. Mm. Technology is not a perfect <laughs> device. Whichever one you break could we have update. some challenges and some difficulties. This eye recognition stuff that they are bringing is not absolute. It still could pose some challenges right. to us. What we are saying is that look at the amount of money that we want to commit to compiling a new register. These are the challenges that we have as a nation. 
how much uh, you know development that, uh, that 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 money can so, bring so your to concern, us. Your concern has that's, to do that's, really that's, with what that's 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 uh, your concern has to do with what the the, the money, money that is going to be used. What we are for saying, the, one, that is that the it? first point no, we are making is that hold, hold on, George, George, right there, <laughs> the first point we are making is that we don't know what really is wrong with this that we are talking about. If you think there are ghost names on the register, let's claim it. We have always done. How? Let us how about uh, the devices, the biometric devices. The concern is that most of them are uh, obsolete. They are some of them. When are they say they are obsolete, how do they mean? And then also some so, of them are unable to rec rec uh, recognize <laughs> the fingerprints of uh, registered. Did we have that experience yesterday? Yeah, there were there were such reports. What shows that the new one that we're going to bring in no, 2023 are not going to face advanced. it? But then we do not when know. Said, you see, we do not know. I agree that our electoral system must go through reforms, which we have always done anyway. If you check where we started from in 1993, when we did the 1992 first elections. It was a uh, 1988 disassembly register that we compiled that we used in that particular election. At the time, it was even handwritten. Right. We didn't have pictures in there. But 1996, we had upgraded. We brought in black and white pictures. Gradually, we brought in colored pictures. You know, we introduced transparent balance boxes. boxes. And so we have gone through the process. Almost everybody around us in the sub region today is coming to learn from Ghana and where we have got into with our system. Mm. It must not be that because a new government is in office at all costs. And we are saying we are not uh, cooperating with the Electoral Commission. Look at the way the manner they are going about their things. Are they really seeking to build consensus on this subject? Yes. Or is the case that they want to veto it on us why, because why? they believe the constitution allows them to be independent whatever they want? Why it is, is not for that, nothing. Why is it that they that are unable to resolve these issues at the IPAC level? Because you they are not ready to do it. Who's such a major electoral commission, such a major subject. <laughs> the first time it was right. tabled, I think somewhere in August, you put it as other matters. It was mentioned casually in the discussion, at the tail end of the discussion. The day after the discussion, you issue a public statement. Mm. Saying that the parties have agreed or have decided or anything like that, mm. when they've not have any comprehensive conversation around the subject and agreed. The last time we invited political parties to an IPAC meeting, we didn't even get an agenda. The subject was not an agenda. They go there and then, bam, you just straight at them that you are coming to show them uh, the new technology you are introducing and stuff like that. Right. So that, because we need to know, so that when we are going for an IPAC meeting, then we also send our experts to go there. To go and really see if what they are bringing is the best to help this country. But as if the letter committee has its own agenda, we want to do whatever we want to do. We are an autonomous body. We don't even care about this type of thing. We agree. Yeah. No, <laughs> but you see, but in the wisdom of the persons who have chaired that institution in the past, the thing that political parties have been very, very quick. They are just take orders anyway. And so if you are going to take a decision, and our inputs should not be part of your decision, then what are you doing? But have there been Smarting. inputs and taken so, from the parties? But the AC still goes ahead to, to, to you know implement whatever decision. If you, it if you, if you look at the current the if you look at the yes. current posturing, you listen to the commentary from people who work in the Electoral Commission. Clearly, these are people who have made up their mind they want to do this. Mm. They don't care what they think. You don't care whatever other view you hold. That's if they're not interested. So they call into a meeting like a zombie, come and sit down, put your hands in your laps and just listen to us. This is what we want to do, we whether you like it or not, we want to do. Martin. I am saying that. I agree that we need reforms in our elections, and that we have done consistently. But this thing where we throw money away, I'm telling you, it's, do what that is, that this is exercise, your interpretation of the exercise. That is what we are going to that do. It is that is going to be. Uh, <laughs> did you waste follow? Of resources. Did you follow how much money they are asking for to embark on this yes, exercise? We've seen, we've seen those figures. Look at the figures. Parliament for yes, for the when we ask them how much money are you spending on this assembly elections, they are able to tell us the figures. Mm. They claim because of the referendum aspect of it, they are unable to tell us. I thought that that is just simple mathematics. The referendum will cost us a, 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 B, C, D. This one will cost us this. If you have taken the referendum out, then this is what is left. They were unable to tell us. Now you are going to demand this money to go and compile a new register. And I've said that anytime you are compiling a new register, don't forget it's not only the electoral commission that in care cost. Political parties also in care cost. Right. Because we need to move around, right. we need to get our agents, we need to get people out to come and register. Even Ghanaians who live abroad who have to travel back home to come and register. It's all, you know, cost to all of them. Okay. So for me... Martin, let's, remember let's, the changing of the logo? We I, saw it, me, we love it, and we did it. All of us criticized okay. it. Okay. Okay. So At the it. time, some that, of that, us... I disagree No, no, the logo is really I mentioned. When it came out, <laughs> some of us openly <laughs> said on radio okay. that for me, I don't think it was uh, the most important uh, thing at the time. Fred, Fred, let me, let me bring George in. And George, yeah. let's shift away from... Uh, the current shenanigans between the political parties and, yeah. the, uh, and the electoral commission. The concern for many a Ghanaian is that why 
does it seem that when NPP is in power, the opposition has a problem with the Electoral Commission? And when there's a change of government and we have NDC in power, <laughs> the NPP has a problem with the Electoral Commission. After Dr. Farijan, uh, you know, retired, yeah. that has been the concern. How do we deal with this so we can leave the independent body to work independently? Uh, uh, before I answer that, it's not true. I stand to be corrected that it's every 10 years. We call 96 to 2004, definitely it's not 10 years, right? Did you change the register? <laughs> I do that. Did we change the register? Yes. Or we are upgraded the register? No, 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 no. We changed. Uh, we did. No. That's when the picture... And no, then but I told you, you and I told you yes, that the 92 well, election, and then the it, last one. Sorry, just, just do this. Yes, the 92 yes. uh, yeah. register the was the 1988 right. assembly register that we compared okay, that so. we use. And so, so it's an so so let, 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 let me let me do that. And then two, if the money argument comes in, then definitely we don't need a democracy. We don't need a democracy. How, we need how, how we need democracy dictatorship. Does not mean right? that be because how much do we spend on the money? Yeah, if we're talking about money, come on. You know the price if we can save the money for something else. If we don't have proper there's a company says if it must be done, it must be done well, right? And so we need a very credible register going okay. forward. But uh, <laughs> to the, to the, this to the suspicion question. and all that. One, the IPAC must be properly used. Okay, and then to understand there's a new committee which the former president what Papa is, the Day, of it? Uh, yeah. is, is lauded, right? Let's mm -hmm. get a very what, credible yeah, so alternative. EC so the EC what That's it is is that must respect no no you, 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 no the IPAC like no I, I will settle on the IPAC and briefly for let IPAC go good. let IPAC when they meet at IPAC <laughs> and they come to a decision let the EC respect that and implement it. You get it. Let it not but be seen that. that yes. The EC doesn't even sometimes yes. take their positions to even That's, consider it. Yes. So it's a challenge. No, but that if, they're, if they're EC raising. invites you uh -huh. uh, to introduce a new something to you, yeah. I thought the proper thing is you watch your listing when you finish. You go back and then do your you yes. know due diligence. No, you and then there'll be a bit, it's <laughs> introduction. It means uh -huh. there'll be a proper engagement of the issue. But Introduce how often the has the issue. No, that's board, IPAC meetings. You concepts. can call any party can call for IPAC. To okay, meet, no, the, the, right? the bit about the politicking. So, yes, that we seem. To no, be and and problems. we seem to mistrust the electoral commissioner. You get it? Uh, I am. I have problem with the posturing of of uh, uh, Charlotte uh, Charlotte or saying. But I don't have any problem with, with, with today. Uh, now I'm coming uh, today. Hold on, I see. Hold on, I see. Madame Jemensa as a fine, you know, woman imagine? who is. Can you imagine? Coming to do her business, focus. Did you just but say the that? NDC, Did you just the say NDC that? also has Sorry, problems. Let, 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 you know? so, but so far, Madam James says public comments have not been as abrasive. She's the worst. As abrasive. She's the worst. As abrasive. She's the worst. She, 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 she and uh, uh, <laughs> Bosma have been the worst. <laughs> Relax. 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 you've not even answered my question. Yes, <laughs> yeah. we are going to Crystal in a minute. Yes. We're going to Crystal in a minute. Come Fred, Fred, quickly. I mean, why is it that when you are in opposition, you? You do not seem to trust the Electoral Commission, but then whichever government is in power seem to have a, a good time with the issue. I, I agree that it's something that we need to look at. Maybe the conduct, the posturing, the public commentary of yes. persons who get the privilege to, uh, to, 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 to manage that institution okay. also feed into that perception that either they are trying to do the bidding of one uh, party wow. or the other. For instance, if you have Bosmasari comes out to tell Ghana, Dr. Bosmasari, that NDC is a threat to our democracy. When we're going for the referendum, the same person comes out and advocating for a yes vote. You remember we're going for the limited registration. NDC, we submitted uh, 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 our decision to them that they should give us the register, the source copy of the register. They wouldn't okay. deliver it to us. And yet okay. at the time they are delivered it to maybe, us. Maybe this is not the And so the posturing, the commentary and everything clearly tells us that they, are into, they came into office with a particular mindset. We no, are coming to the meeting of let MPP let and Orlando. Right. And that they will be the appointing authority. They are appointing the authority. Your viewers, um, I'm sorry, our viewers and some of your yeah. supporters uh, have sent in comments. And uh, yes. Crystal yes. has yes, joined us to let us know what you're saying. Thank you so much, Martin. Uh, first comment, the low patronage of the district's assembly elections is due to the fact that the assembly members are not well remunerated and taken care of as the MPs. Unfortunately, the assembly members are closer to the people than the MPs and their actions are more related to the communities. Let us pay them just like MPs and the contestants will win more electorates to the elections. 
Uh, Hassan Wanwana in Wa says, Good morning to you and your panelists. Congratulations to all elected assemblymen and women who have won victory. The low turnout this year, uh, of this year's assembly elections was due to ineffective campaign by the aspirants and lack of publicity. Citizen Francis, NPP Facebook caucus says, Only dishonest people would still hold on to the belief that our assembly elections are non-partisan. We will consistently record low turnout if political parties are not allowed to openly and fully participate in the district assembly and unit committee elections in Ghana. Yawuza and Swame says, Congratulations to all winners of yesterday's district level elections. We hope your victory will continue to strengthen local governance and bring development to the doorsteps of Ghanaians. For the losers, better luck next time. That's from Yawuza and Swame. Um, Mukaila Jonas Adia says, The electric, so pardon me, the, the district assembly elections is over, and I was happy to hear that my brother. Um, Bedenyo Jonas won in Kerry electoral area, but on the same vein, I'm sad for Madina seeing a chunk of the areas being won by the incompetent NDC candidates. This is a spell of doom for Madina because they won't be able to deliver. However, this defeat of our candidates sends a clear signal to our executives to restructure the party's roots in the constituency because all isn't well. Let's call a spade a spade, not a fork. Uh, I support the call that district assembly elections be made political. Hashtag fear NDC and save your life. From Dr. Abedi Kwadaso, aka Police Ni Nijono. Um, thank God President Ekufuado advises judges not to judge um, without reason. But I wasn't surprised low turnout marks district uh, assembly elections since Ghanaians are fed up with our assembly members. Hi to Reverend Samuel K. Mensa from uh, Crowform um, CAC. <laughs> Dr. Kingsley Nyako and Kwana. So, uh, yeah. Okay, I strongly believe that one of the causes of low turnout with district level elections is because this, these elections are conducted, if you like, on the community base. Whilst most people have their votes sometimes outside their electoral area or outside their communities, I guess mm. you can't imagine someone go vote for someone who lives outside their electoral area. For example, I live in Adenta, but um, I have my votes at Medina. Prince Henry uh, Koforidia says, Good morning, Martin. So Mrs. Jean Mensah said, um, has the um, courage to ask par Parliament to approve 444 million Ghana cities for her to use in compiling a new um, register after she used same register to conduct the district, district assembly elections. This money could be used for more ambulances. Too much hardship in town. Hashtag no to new register. Hashtag release the ambulances now. From teacher constitution... Uh, in We Are Moise. We thank God for a peaceful assembly election yesterday. Better luck next time to all those who lost. I know most electoral areas have elected co competent people like Nanado and not incompetent persons like former President Mahama. A lot of comments coming in. Good morning. Please, um, the faces of every voter, the faces of every voter has already been captured. So what next? Don't we have our pictures already in the system? A software is there for facial recognition. There is even a machine learning concept that can recognize even a fraction of your face. Please. Uh, that's from Samuel Inua. Good morning, TV3. What Dr. Baumia was saying is very true. Uh, that's from Togolese. Pardon me. Togolese are um, voting in Ghana. Togolese are voting in Ghana. Pardon me. And the last one for this morning. Good morning, TV3. I don't know um, in any, I don't know in other places, but in the northern part of the country, the assembly members are not being taken into consideration until assembly members also have common fund to take some works in their areas. They will be considered uh, irrelevant. That's from Aliu in Karaga. That ends all our comments for this morning, Martin. All right. Thank you very much, Crystal. And I um, want to say a big thank you to you for being a part of the show. This is New Day on TV3. Uh, we had George AEC. He's a member of the NPP's communication team joining us this morning. And then also Fred Agbenyo, uh, member of the NDC's communication team. Certainly, a number of the issues they've raised are going to, you know, we're going to be talking about it but, a lot more in the coming days. But, but you know they're having then, an emergency crisis meeting this morning. And it's following a crisis yesterday, meeting. It's, it's, following it's, yesterday's elections. Why is it a crisis meeting, you think? He knows. <laughs> yeah, why? Oh, it, no? well, why? Well, why? I don't know. know. They're in trouble. Oh, oh, what, what is it? I, I, what is it? Do you get it? I'm not saying anything. You see the hypocrisy? 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 Oh, yes, That's not me. Right, oh, thank you very much. Oh, you see, you see that new day on TV. <laughs> <laughs>